way too simple for a Meet the Queens look and it is way too simple for Drag Race. They definitely look AliExpress. Girl needs to learn how to edit. Girl, work. <laughs> Hi, bonjour, hello my beautiful light brights. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Neon Noir. I'm a half Italian, half Canadian drag queen, living in Belgium. And if you're new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Today, we are playing my favorite game, Fab or Drab, where we rate the looks of Drag Race Belgique promo looks and let you know if they are fab and fabulous or drab and awful. So the Meet the Queens just dropped and the theme is Floral fantasy. Now, I hate florals, so this was a little bit of a hard task for me to get into, but last season's theme was a little bit of that alien outer space fantasy, so I decided to go a little outer space to channel my inner Dragresse Belgique. But enough about me, let's get into these queens. First up, it's Alvida, and Alvida is coming in in this yellow and mint striped attire. It's got ruffles on the arms, it's got ruffles on the legs, and it's got ruffles on the neck. She's paired it with this fascinator filled with flowers and a little bit of mesh. First up, I was gonna say, I don't really like florals. I've said that a couple of times. And so when this theme was introduced, I was like, not excited. Then uh, Alvita comes out as the first queen on Meet the Queens and I'm like, ooh, she did that. For somebody who hated florals, I love this look. I love the color combination next to each other. She's got this like pale mint with this bright yellow. I also hate pastels. My name is Neon Noir. So you know I like things that are a little bit poppy, a little bit more dramatic, uh, but this gave me the drama with giving me the subtlety. The, the gradients in the ruffles kind of remind me of florals without being so literal in florals. On top of it, she kind of got this like clown look to her. And looking at her Instagram, she was definitely more of an artistic queen. So this sort of like clown-esque but haute couture version of it, kind of gives, you know what I mean? If you want to see what I think of all the queens and their Instagrams, I did do a video on that. Go check that out right over there. All in all, I think Alvita looks great from head to toe. She definitely started the meet with the queens with a bang and I would not change a thing. And because of all of those reasons, for Alvita, it is 100% a fab for me. Next up is Chloe Clark. And Chloe Clark is coming out in this peach and purple attire. She's got all of these lace detailing, the beautiful jewels, and this big, lovely hair. It's really a color look from head to toe, and I love a queen who can match. Right off the bat, when I saw these fan things coming off her body, it gave me Brooklyn Heights vibes, but done in a pastel, floral, a Drag Race Belgique way. Clearly, Chloe Clark spent some money on this outfit because all of the details are there. It's got rhinestones, it's got tulle, it's got expensive fabric, and it's got expensive hair and jewels. She really gave you everything, but also didn't give you too much. It's that perfect balance that we love in a drag queen where we want a lot, but we don't want to be like, you know, in your face a lot. It is, you know, perfection, to be honest. I just wish there would have been more skin. I love this lace thing underneath, but I think it's not necessarily needed. I think some, some skin tone would have just really helped alleviate the eye a little bit. Other than that, everything is excellent. And that's why for Chloe Clark, it is definitely a fab. Next up, it's Gabbana. And Gabbana is coming out in this pale blue dress. It's got flowers on the bottom. It's got flowers in her hair. She's also got a whole bunch of rhinestones in her hair. It's definitely giving you Spanish vibes and Gabbana is a Spanish queen. I love that already before she speaks in her Meet the Queens look, we already get to know exactly who this queen is. On top of it, she also is super elegant and rich. It's not your stereotypical abuela sort of, uh, Spanish vibes, but it is like take that old idea and bring it to a new modern way. 
The color combination is also really interesting with the purples and the blues. It's definitely giving. All in all, I will say that I love this outfit. It is elegant and it tells you who she is. It does the job. And although it is not my style of drag, it fits perfectly for Gabbana. And that is why she is definitely getting a fab. Next up, it's Lulu Velvet. And Lulu Velvet is coming in in this multi-shade of pink tulle sort of ball gown. It is definitely giving you princess fantasy. Uh, she does look like she's just coming from a ball. I will say the one thing that really impressed me about Lulu is that she said she makes her outfits. And if she made this, girl, work. I can never. But if we look at the outfit itself, it is giving you princess like i said it is not really doing anything amazing i feel like it's not really telling me who she is in the meet the queen she said she's more she's a burlesque queen and i don't see that in this outfit if she was more burlesque i would have loved for her to do some little lace moment or some you know some boas or i'm not quite sure but this is not reading burlesque it is reading drag and it is reading expensive drag but it is not reading burlesque. And this is the Meet the Queen, so I kind of wish it would have told me something a little bit about her. But it is by no means a bad outfit. It's actually pretty good. It is just nothing special. The only thing is, is comparing it to all the other queens, it is not as extravagant or as cool or unique as some of the other ones. So it does kind of get lost a little bit in the mix. But ultimately, she looks good, so I have to give her a fab. Next up, it's Morphe, and she's also giving you that little alien creature vibe, which I love. She's coming out in this white gown with gradients of yellow and purple into it. She's got her face painted with this sort of creature s drag. She's got also these little furry moments and things popping off of her. It definitely feels like creature coming from a flower. It's definitely like nymph in the forest, but done in a extraterrestrial sort of way. It is definitely giving me everything that it needs to give. Already from her Meet the Queens, I already get that she is very much a unique queen and she is definitely going to be the one who's going to give us the little kooky and a little bit more avant-garde uh take on things and we love some diversity in a casting the only thing i would have changed on mokfei's look is that i would have taken her beautiful paint all the way down her chest and her arms to give you like that purple creature fantasy from head to toe right now it feels here and it feels in the dress and then on the body you get human skin but that is just a detail. All in all, she looks elegant, she looks put together, and she is definitely giving you a vibe. And that is why, for Morphe, I am definitely gonna have to go with a fab. Next up, it's Sarah Logan. And Sarah Logan is coming out in this plain white dress with these big yellow shoulders. She's paired it with slick back, blonde hair, and this big over-the-top fascinator. Let's start with the positives. So I will say that the headpiece is super cool. It gives height. It gives fashion. It gives you that moment. I also think that this yellow really pops, and I like that she's put rhinestones all over it. The thing that I don't like is, overall, this feels very plain. You have a lot of other queens doing a lot, and this just feels so basic in comparison. It is way too simple for a Meet the Queens look, and it is way too simple for Drag Race. This has me concerned. I am very curious what she's gonna bring, bring in on the runway, because usually the Meet the Queens are some of the best looks, because they're filmed like after the season is over, and if this is her best drag, then what is she gonna be bringing us on this season? Girl, I hope better than this. All in all, like I said, it is kind of middle of the road, it is nothing special, and it is not enough. And that is why for Sarah Logan, for her Meet the Queens look, it is definitely gonna be a drab. I'm sorry, babes. Next up, it's Star. And Star is coming out in this sort of nude yellow bodysuit with these neon pink straps all over it. She's got one sleeve that is 
filled with tulle and the other sleeve that is fully metallic. She's paired it with a silver necklace, big earrings, and this short pink pussycat wig. Star says that she has been doing drag for 25 years, and I will say that I don't know what she looks like out of drag, but in drag, she does not look like she's been doing drag for 25 years. And I say that not because she doesn't look good. I say that because she looks so young. I thought she was in her early 30s. So, but if she's been doing drag for 20 years, like, how old is this bitch? I love that she's taken this young approach to her drag. Sometimes when drag queens have been doing drag for quite a long time, you start getting them to look a little old school. And Star is not giving you those old school vibes. This pink pussycat wig has got like different colors and textures into it. She's got a little bit of the like that pop and she's showing body oddy oddy. That's the positive. The negative. Girl needs to learn how to edit. And this is where her age is shown because she's got one too many accessories on it. She's got this necklace. She's got this earring. She's got this ring. She's got this arm. She's got another bracelet. Whew, it is too much. And on top of it, all of these individual pieces look cheap. They definitely look AliExpress. And her outfit doesn't look cheap. On top of it, she's got this bodysuit that is sort of like this beige yellow color and i'm not sure about this i feel like it is too close to her skin tone to really be yellow and it is not close enough to her skin tone to be completely transparent also if it was supposed to be transparent like why would you not have any like nipples or anything like that it just feels strange personally if it was up to me i wish she would have just done the bodysuit in another color maybe like a pale pink or something lost half the accessories and did like just one accessory but made that one accessory like really pop, I think it would have gone a long way. But her hair, the, the idea and everything else is really nice. All in all, it's not there yet. It needs some editing. And that is why for Star, I'm gonna have to go with a draft. <laughs> Next up, it's the bearded queen, LaVerve. And LaVerve is coming out in this purple dress with this purple headpiece and this big pink and purple boa. Immediately when I saw it, I got the reference. It's definitely giving me Venus flytrap. Now, if it is not a Venus flytrap, I am sorry because that's definitely what I thought it was. And I thought this was an interesting take. In my previous video, when we went through all the contestants' Instagram, uh, she was definitely giving you that sort of spooky vibe. So to take this floral theme and give you Venus flytrap, I think was so genius because it ties into her personality. It's also got like that sort of fortune teller vibes to her outfit with the with the turban headpiece and the gown. And that is again, reminiscent to what she's shown on her Instagram. So it is very her. I think that the boa uh, is definitely needed because the gown itself is super plain. Actually, I think that the gown could have used a little zhuzhing a little bit everywhere. On her headpiece, I wish she would have had like a giant sort of uh, stone straight in the middle to give you more of that like Jafar vibes and, and I wish that the gown would have had some more detailing maybe some rhinestones or sequence fabric mixed in just to give you a little bit more oomph to the outfit. The boa is kind of the whole moment here and that's kind of the problem I have with it. I wish it would have all sort of married up to this boa. It's not bad, but it's not great. And I will say that it definitely moves and looks better in video than it does in still images. And I do feel like that deep purple definitely stands out in a negative way, uh, especially in this collection of queens. She wants to stand out, but I don't feel this is the way to do it. On top of it, this Venus flytrap attire uh, around her neck is super cool, but I wish it was more. I wish it was like, had some things come off of it. It just feels a little bit stiff and I wish it would have had like that more dainty, flowery, you know, vibe to it so you can mix that hard and soft. All in all, it's kind of not there enough for me and I really, really wanted to love this queen. And since it's not there enough for me, I'm just gonna have to go and hey, give it a drab. <laughs> Next up, it's Madame Yoko, and Madame Yoko is coming out in this white cat suit with floral detailing. She's paired it with this big over-the-top 
peach coat and this biggest hat you've ever seen. I will say I have to eat my words and apologize to Miss Madam Yoko because in my last video where I broke down the Instagrams, I was not loving Madam Yoko, but she's turned it around for me in this look. She definitely came in with an idea and a concept and this hat being so big and over the top was the moment. She thought about it. She's like, I want to stand out. So she gave you this hat. On top of it, these colors all work super well together. It's giving you floral without giving you floral, if you know what I mean. It definitely looks put together and it looks like she knows what she is doing. So this outfit is definitely giving you a lot more than her Instagram is. Madam Yoko, if you watch this, fix your Instagram. But back to the outfit, I love this. Uh, I, th I think this outfit is pretty spot on, pretty what you need to be. It, it is not the one that stands out the most, but it definitely doesn't stand out in any bad way. And that is why, for Madame Yoko, I'm gonna have to go with a ah. And that is it for Meet the Queens. Um, I am so excited to be seeing a second season of Drag Race Belgique. I think that the first one had a couple of stumbling blocks and I'm excited to see if they were able to amp it up. But just looking at the Queens this season and looking at the uh, promo looks, I think that we're in for some interesting Queens and some interesting takes. I'm super excited to see what my Belgian sisters have to offer. But enough about that. I know why you messy bitches are here. You messy bitches are here to find out who had my drab of the week. Well, my drab of the week this week has to go to Sarah Logan. I didn't like this one. I just felt like it just wasn't enough for a Meet the Queens and the, a lot of other queens were just turning it up and outshining her. So hopefully she can bring it this season and redeem herself. Enough about the negative, let's get into the positive. Who had my fab of the week? Well, this week my fab of the week has to go to Alvita. I just love this one. It is different, it is unique, it was super interesting and I kind of love it. And that's why she's got my fab of the week. Y'all, that is it for this week's episode. Are you as excited as I am? Do you agree or disagree with my thoughts? Well, go ahead and leave a comment down below. Let me know who you like, who you hate, who you think should be winning this season. No spoilers. And let me know if I should be doing a whole series of these fab and drab. Honestly, let me know. I do read all the comments and I do try to reply to most of them. So I am not just like that you're faceless bitch. I am a real person. And while you're in the comments, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. It would really mean a lot to me. I'm really trying to hit that thousand subscriber mark, which is proven to be very difficult. Once again, my name is Neon Noir at Miss Neon Noir on all social platforms. And I'll see you in one of my next videos. Bye-bye.